Let us pray. Gracious Father, now we come to your precious, strong word this morning. And Lord, we ask you to open our ears and clear our minds of all the distractions. And you take our hearts and you soften it and strengthen it for this upcoming week. In Jesus' name, amen. We had a, quite a, a weekend once again here at Trinity Lutheran. And Wednesday night we had our Thanksgiving Eve service. And, uh, and we had four out of the five deacons up here helping me. And I tell you, I have just... I'm so excited. Um, it saves my voice, and, uh, and it's neat to see them using their gifts. And that's our theme today, is using our gifts as we build up Christ. And it's kind of neat, John Ross, you see, has his camera up here, and he filmed the, the service Thanksgiving Eve as folks came up to the altar, and they have their prayers and Thanksgiving, and so we, he does that um, from time to time, so there goes, if you can't make it due to sickness, if you want to hear the message or the service, it's on YouTube. Just type in what Trinity Lutheran, Prescott Valley, and PV, PV. you can see PV, and you can see the service at hand. And then a couple of you helped me Friday as we prepared for a resurrection service here on Saturday, and they did a live webcast. Um, we had a camera right to the internet right away to family in Ohio and Florida, as this was the, the daughter, the unofficial adopted daughter of Jen and Alan Radloff. And she was a young mom, and um, just in her early 30s, skin cancer. And within a year, she passed away, leaving two children. And uh, the place was packed. We had the sheriff department here, many men in their uniforms, supporting Alan. And then, of course, um, supporting Ian, the husband. And Ian is a fruit of God's world, downstairs. He um, even broke his toe on one of those pillars, round pillars, that many of us run into from time to time. And his mom was also our cook at one time. Her name is Judy. And so it was a nice homecoming. And we've been helping him out with his kids here at God's World. And you're talking about gifts. I tell you, I, don't, I look at my gifts, and I think the one gift that I might have is working with our children. Because when you have 150 people in the sanctuary, and they're all strangers, and I thank you for those who were with us yesterday, our deacons and elders, supporting Alan and those helping downstairs with the, with the luncheon. You know, how do you reach strangers that we don't know? You know, we know each other. We're family. We can share and talk and laugh and cry together. And um, there, Ian's little son, Wyatt, three years old, goes to preschool now with us. And we used him. He came up here, Alan, the grandfather, hold him. And we did a chapel message talking about his mom being in heaven and children. It was a powerful service yesterday, and thank you for all those who supported it. Now we get to chapter 14 of 1 Corinthians. One of the challenges when you go from chapter to chapter is that you got to talk on what Paul talks about when the Holy Spirit, and today, is speaking in tongues. What's the first mind comes when you hear of speaking in tongues? Now, we're a very conservative Christian church, Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. And we don't, we have our, we're very church of order and peace. And, um, and I remember many times going to visiting different churches in my studies and going to the vineyard in Southern California and walking into a place and all of a sudden speaking in tongues. It's like, it was, it was weird. It was different. But it's there in scripture and we got to talk about it and address it. Let me just begin at verse 1 there, chapter 14. He goes, follow the way of love. And eagerly desire spiritual gifts, especially the gift of prophecy. What is prophecy? Prophecy is proclaiming God's word. That's simple. We see that in the Old Testament prophets as they proclaim God's word. We see John the Baptist proclaiming God's word. And the disciples, apostles. The prophecy comes from God's word that we have today called the Bible. And that is proclaiming that we are sinners. And we need a savior and salvation only comes from the lord now of course we talk about prophecy a lot of people want to talk about prophecy about the future well it's all in the bible it's a puzzle though and all those two different churches have different thoughts about the future but it's all there for us to have faith in christ when he comes to take us home that's prophecy and that's what paul is talking about he's not going to put down Speaking in tongues. And we'll talk about the definition of speaking in tongues in a second. But he's talking about the whole thing is building up the church. When you gather together as a group, 
Okay, do what's going to be helpful for the group. Whatever you do in your devotional time, that's up between you and your Lord. Um, in your private time. But when you come together, you're going to play together. All right? Work together. And so he continues. Verse 2. For anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. Indeed, no one understands him. He utters mysteries with his spirit. But everyone who prophesies speaks to men for their strengthening, encouragement, and comfort. That's the prophecy, to encourage, comfort, and strengthen. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. I would like every one of you to speak in tongues, but I would rather have you prophesy. He who prophesies greater than the one who speaks in tongues, unless he interprets so that the church may be edified. Here's the challenge with speaking in tongues, is that there's like two different explanations and they might both fit together and some churches take one and some churches take the other charismatic movement started about the 1901 and they believe that speaking in tongues was lost in the last 2000 years and they didn't the early church and speaking in tongues was a heavenly language between the holy spirit and god through baptism and so that was not a, a human language but it was a language that was just uttering and communicating with God and the Holy Spirit through you and making these sounds. Some of you have been to churches like that, where you've gone to and go, what in the world is going on? And, and different people, maybe one or two or three, are, are standing up and they're lifting their hands and they're saying something that you have no idea. And that movement really started in the 1900s and so on and has taken its, its, its journey. In fact, there are some charismatics in the Lutheran church too that are that many of us kind of distance ourselves at times that we're, we just don't know what they're doing. And so, and then there's this other explanation of speaking in tongues that happens in Acts chapter 2. The Pentecost. Where here the Jews have gathered together in, in the upper room waiting for the Holy Spirit to come and the Holy Spirit comes on them. And Passover, there you, Pentecost now. Remember, Passover is a religious um, weekend celebration, week celebration, 50 days later, the Pentecost is more of the harvest and, and wheat and so on like that. So it's more the business people coming that are not spiritual or religious. And so here all of a sudden, now the Holy Spirit, they start speaking the disciples in different people's languages. And that's what we have these two things. Speaking in heavenly language that no one understands or speaking in other languages as well. Like my daughter Natalie went to Czech Republic to be a missionary for a year, using English as a tool, a vehicle to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. She could use Bible stories um, to teach English with them, but they don't speak English. <laughs> it's a foreign language. When I was with her for two years, it was quite a journey. I mean, for two weeks, excuse me, shadowing her. It's amazing to watch how she caught on to the language little by little. And missionaries, with the guidance of the Holy Spirit, can pick up languages to start sharing our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So let me continue. We already read the part that Dennis did and talking about music and so on. But let me just go to verse 13. It goes, For this reason, anyone who speaks in the tongue should pray that he may interpret what he says. This is the Lutheran approach of speaking in tongues. Is that if we come together as a body of Christ and someone starts to speak in a language, it's very important, because this is what Paul says, the criteria through the Holy Spirit is that someone needs to interpret what they are saying. So we say that's probably a human, another human language, like Pentecost, and they hear about Jesus Christ. When we go to different services that we're not comfortable with, what do we tend to do? <laughs> we tend to start being distracted of the difference what they do in that service, right? They start, what are they doing in that service? And you start getting your eyes off of Jesus and the gospel, and you start being critical and nitpicky of what other services are doing. Whether in the Lutheran church, we have offered three different services here, or another church that you go to. And so Paul, the Holy Spirit, through Paul, saying, we want to do things in peace and order. He continues, for I pray in my tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. So what shall I do? I will pray with my spirit, but I'll also pray with my mind, and I'll sing with my spirit. 
but also sing with my mind. If you are praising God with your spirit, how can one who finds himself among those who do not understand? Say amen to your thanksgiving since he does not know what you are saying. You may be giving thanks well enough, but the other man is not built up. This is what, as a church, as we come together, the key is mutual understanding, clear communication, so that we can all worship and receive God's grace. When we get distracted, what happens to us? We get critical, we get off focus, and we start looking at each other. And the other challenge, too, is that we all have spiritual gifts, and we want to sometimes push our gifts on to other people. That's the challenge with the charismatic movement is that they always came on strong saying that if you have the Holy Spirit, you'll speak in tongues. I had friends like that a lot. And they say, Tim, you don't have the Spirit if you don't speak in tongues. We know that through baptism, we have the Holy Spirit. And He gives us all great gifts, what we need to do what? To build up the church. And so this is what I want to encourage us today. He goes on, he goes like this in verse 22. Tongues, then, are a sign not for believers, but for unbelievers, going back to Pentecost. Prophecy, however, is for believers, not for unbelievers. So if the whole church comes together and everyone speaks in tongues, some who do not understand or some unbelievers come in, will they not say that you are out of your mind? Remember what they said to the disciples when they were speaking in different languages? They must be drunk. Yeah, they must be drunk. And Paul Peter says, oh, it's only nine in the morning. We're not drunk. It's the Holy Spirit building up the church. I had that. I shouldn't even say that joke. I was just going to, I'm sure some of you are thinking about it. It's got to be five o'clock somewhere. <laughs> some of you were thinking about that in a second. So you go here and he goes, so everyone speaks in tongues. But verse 24, but if an unbeliever or someone who does not understand comes in while everybody is prophesying, he will be convinced by all that he is a sinner and will be judged by all. And the secret of his heart will be laid bare, so he'll fall down and worship God, explain, God, it's really, you are really among us. And so, we don't understand the whole mysteries of God this morning. And this speaking in tongues we know as a Lutheran church really focuses on missionaries and those who can pick up foreign languages quickly to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. But as we come together, it's important that we celebrate God's forgiveness and grace and all that we do. We don't push our gifts on each other. No gift is greater than the gift of love as we share love with each other through Jesus Christ to build each other up. Sin tears us down. But the love of Christ builds us up. And we do it in peace and order. And the rest of chapter 14 talks about that. That there is peace. There's not chaos. But as a Christian church, that we come together and we love. And every time we're in a group, let's think about through Jesus Christ, through the words of Christ in his eyes, am I going to build up or am I trying to tear down? He's forgiven us. We've all been there. I know even as a pastor, I have said many times, tearing you down instead of building you up. Only through Christ can do that. And that's what we get ready for Advent and Christmas as He will build us up and give us what we need. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen.